Uh, our next speaker is going to talk about functional reactive programming. Um, lots of people think this complements the React flow um, uh, really, really well. So uh, for our next speaker, please welcome Eliane Schutz. Hello, everyone. Ami, can you hear me? Yes, good. Let me pull up my slides. Awesome. Cool, all right. Um, hello, React London. I'm very happy to be here. Um, I'm gonna talk to you today about Redux Observable, um, and I'll, you'll learn about it a little bit. Um, a few disclaimers. I am a casual user, not an expert user. Um, so there's gonna be a lot you're gonna have to Google later. Um, but let's get started. Um, I'm gonna assume you've heard of Redux for this talk, just because I couldn't really go into it in the allotted time. Um, if you don't, basically what you need to know is that there are some actions that get emitted by your website, and you can put some middleware in between to handle them and do async stuff. Um, so, the thing with Redux is that, and this is a big topic, um, there are side effects. So maybe you need to make a call to an API, um, and that, problem has created many, many solutions uh, in open source. Um, a lot of different people have tried to tackle it. Um, there's, of course, Read of Thunk, which is the king and queen of side effects. Um, most popular, most used. Um, there is Redux Saga, or Sagas, I don't know if it's singular or plural. Um, my friend Sophie, who is here right now, gives a great Saga talk, so if you have any questions, you should find her. Um, and then there's Redux Observable, which people are sort of like, what is that? Um, so that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I did a very highly scientific, carefully studied Twitter poll, um, and almost got 500 people, which is really infuriating that I didn't. But um, as you can see, the sort of usage in the world of my Twitter friends um, looks kind of like this. Um, so epics are the Redux observable right there. It's just coming into 6%. So I was like, maybe I should share a little bit because I work at Trainline. And we've been using it for about a year now, not very intensely, but it has been there. Um, so I was surprised to see that not that many people were using it. So disclaimer, oh, that is very green. Um, this is not like a versus. This is not you should use Redux observable because all the others are crap. This is just like you should learn this. It's important. Um, and if you want, you can use it. If you don't, you know, that's fine too. Um, this is me. I work at the train line on trainline.com. If you don't know, we are a digital rail and bus platform. So if you ever need to take a train, uh, come find us. Um, I'm Ellie Belly on Twitter, so please feel free to tweet pictures. Um, I really like GIFs and emoji because I'm a millennial, so those are great. Um, all right, so Redux Observable. Redux Observable is actually sort of a Redux wrapper around um, RxJS. RxJS and is a, the JavaScript binding of sort of the Reactive S fra Reactive X framework, um, which is this whole reactive programming paradigm, which has been around for a while, but I feel like more talked about recently. Um, and because I didn't know when I was writing this, could I do a show of hands who's heard of RxJS, who's used it at least once, who uses it every day. Perfect. So you won't know if I'm wrong. That's great. Um, so this is from the website. It's a library for composing asynchronous and event-based programs by using observable sequences, um, which is kind of a big wordy way to say that everything is a stream. So if you imagine it's like an array over time. So imagine you have values that are constantly coming in, and you can have a stream of anything. You can have a stream of numbers. You can have a stream of events, like button clicks. You can have a stream of web socket connections, um, cats. Everything is a stream. That's the whole sort of core of reactive programming. Um, and thusly, there's this functional reactive programming paradigm where you can Everything you do with like normal functional programming, like map filter, that kind of thing, but on streams. So it's just functional programming 
but with time. Um, and it's often on the internet represented like this. Um, this is called a marble diagram, so the line is time. And then each of the numbers is an event, and then the line at the end means that that stream has completed. Sometimes there's an X if there's an error. Um, so you'll see a couple of these I'll show you uh, later. So yeah, uh, if you've done any functional programming or any just JavaScript programming, you've probably used map, filter, and reduce on your arrays. Um, Reactive, or RxJS and reactive programming is kind of the similar thing, but on the streams. Um, so you can do it, and every time a new event happens, it'll run the map or the filter or the reduce. That's the only big difference. Um, and if we look at it as a marble diagram, you see we have one stream, and we map over it. And every time a thing comes in from that stream, at any given point in time, um, it'll map out to times 10. That's it. Um, a lot of people make it really scary. And it does get really complicated after. But I think the bases of it are not that bad. Um, a lot, the, one of the creators have ca has called it the Lodash of streams, because RxJS is basically a utility library um, and has all these functions. So instead of doing one operator on like each item in an array, every time an object comes in, you do that operator on the object. So if you had a fuck that operator in this case, um, Every time something new came in, it would um, uh, apply it. <laughs> very technical, I know. So here is a very simple example. This is sort of like the hello world of RxJS. Um, so we have our library. It's Rx. Um, and the streams in the Rx world are called observables. This comes from the observer pattern and like the design patterns. You can call them streams. You can call them, I don't know, wiggly lines over time. I don't care. Um, some people get really intense about, like, you have to call them observables, but are they really pure observables? Don't listen to them. It's fine. Um, you can create an observable or a stream from an event in the DOM. In this case, uh, button clicks. Um, RxJS has this from event um, function that just binds the click event for that element to it. And then once you subscribe, that's kind of like, like if you had a promise, it's kind of like the then. It's like now do a thing. Um, so we're just going to console log clicked. And if you see the little GIF here, every time you click, it just outputs it. Um, so that's the hello world. Now, RxJS is actually really powerful. And the, it has a really, really long list of operators. Um, and the button click is like the tip of a really, really big iceberg of what you can do with observables, um, which means that you can do a lot, but it's also never really a trivial thing. So disclaimer, it's one of those things where it makes easier things harder and harder things easier. It's that kind of thing where if you're just doing like a basic setup, you might not really need it. Uh, it's often overkill. For example, you know the map function arrays. You can map over streams. In RxJS, you can also flat map over streams and concat map and switch map, and exhaust map. And actually, flat map is also called merge map. So if you just have simple, like, fetch a thing from a server, maybe you don't want to get into this whole mess. But if you do, you will feel very cool and smart and special. Um, when used properly, it can be very declarative, because instead of worrying about um, how to do specific things, you can worry about what it does. Uh, and I'll show you a little bit more about that later. Um, it raises the level of abstraction so you can focus more on business logic rather than implementation details. Um, and that's one of the big draws for people with um, reactive programming, oops, is that the, you, it's a bit of a shift in mindset. But once you can grasp it, it's, it can be very powerful and become actually very easy to view sort of like your top level business logic. Um, Here's an example of another operator. It's called distinct until changed. Um, what does thus is it, it shows you unique values, um, but if they get repeated, it doesn't repeat them, right? So distinct until changed. Now, try to imagine how you would implement this without having like a utility tool that's called distinct until, chain, until changed. You would have to maybe keep track of state. Maybe you would have to do some sort of uh, compare function to see if things were the same. Are you comparing by reference, by value? You know, those kind of things. Um, 
But in RxJS, you can be like, well, here's a stream of things, and every time one comes in, don't let me know about it unless it's changed, which it says so on the operator. You can just tell it to do that. So it can really simplify some things about uh, flow and logic um, in a really clear way. Um, and marble diagrams are your friend here. Um, sometimes when I'm struggling with them, I'll draw them. Or there's a lot of, I have a list of resources in the back where you can put your observable into a thing and it'll play it out because it's a very visual thing at first. Um, and RxJS really shines in complex scenarios. Um, so if you have like a UI that's very closely tied to your data or to your, maybe you have to do API calls for your UI a lot. Um, WebSockets are a pretty good uh, use case. Um, it has complex Ajax and fetch or cancelable, which is pretty cool. Um, it's really easy to cancel requests, which it's not necessarily true in other things. I think you, where Sophie Sagos can cancel things too, right? Anybody? I don't know. Um, and like animations is really good for because it has a lot of built-in like delays and buffering and throttling and debouncing. Um, so that's RxJS sort of in a very, very small nutshell. And Redux Observable is the Redux middleware for RxJS. So if you have a Redux project, you can plug this in. And the way that RxJS works is that each action is an event in your stream. So uh, instead of having click events or array numbers, um, it's your Redux actions. Um, and the middleware will hook them into a pipe. Um, and then you can operate. So you can say, anytime I get any of these type of actions, do these operators on them, that kind of thing. Um, the main chunk of work in Redux Observable is the epic, um, because we're cool like that. Um, it's a function that takes a stream of actions and returns a stream of actions. So they're chainable and sort of the, there, there's a lot of like immutability involved. So the functional nerds are always like, yes, love it. Um, this is important. Everything has to be an epic. Um, there's a convention where you call things and then you add epic to the end as you would. So what does an epic look like? Um, an epic, for example, this is a ping pong epic takes in a stream of actions. You'll notice that action has a dollar sign at the end. Um, and that is sort of the common way to denote that it's an observable and not like a static value. Um, it has this helper function called of type. So if you have an action emitted by your Redux of type ping, you can call delay on it, maybe if you want to wait, um, and then map it to another action. So actions in, actions out uh, of type pong. So here is how that would work. You start pinging. You stop pinging. You start pinging. You wait a second. You stop pinging. Obviously, unless you're doing a ping pong app, this isn't very helpful. Um, but one thing worth noting is that the observables um, do something with your actions after the action has been processed by the reducer. Um, and this is very helpful. So you can have loading states, for example, or like you can change your UI um, accurately based on the actions. Um, and this is just a reminder that dollar sign means it's an observable or a stream. Um, but let's look at a more meaty example. Meaty example. There you go. Um, so let's say you want to fetch a user in your application. Um, you pass it in the stream of actions. And this is all actions ever um, in your application. So you can actually look for multiple types of action. So maybe if one of your pages, for some reason, has get user action, but a different page has a fetch user action, you can look uh, for both of them. Um, you can just comma separate them. It's really helpful. Um, so we're going to map them. Uh, RxJS comes with an Ajax function. If, not, if you don't want to use it, you don't have to. Um, but you go fetch something, get some JSON, and then that response, once you get it, you can map it to another action, because it's actions in, actions out. Um, and so this, the thing was successful action. That's an action creator. Um, will be emitted as a normal action in the dispatch of your store. And you can do stuff like error handling, so it has the built-in catch function, very helpful. Um, it also has um, async that you can cancel, which can be very helpful, especially if you are like have a single page app and you want to change pages. Um, you can cancel your actions. So this is an example. Let's say Siri wants to cancel your Saturday night. Uh, you look for the get Saturday night events, 
and in your stream of actions, um, it'll sort of get filter. Of type, by the way, is a wraparound filter. It just filters on type. Um, so you go, you go get your calendar items from your API with the get JSON method. Um, you map the response to an action, so actions in, actions out. But there's this uh, operator called take until. There's in the stream another action of type cancel. So you can just say, do it, but if it's in progress and you get a cancel thing, just stop it. Just give up. We don't need it. It's fine. Um, so that's one of my favorite things, actually, about Redux Observable. Um, it's very declarative. So if we look at this example, it's actually very helpful for stuff like autocomplete. So let's say, imagine you're typing into a search box, right? Like Googling something. Um, the, your epic actually also takes in the store. So if you need to get state at some point, I don't think I do in this, but if you do need to get um, your current state at some point to act on it, you have it in there. It's all in there. You can use your selectors, et cetera. Um, so look at this. So you have an action, and you say, um, my user is typing. And every time they type a letter, um, I might want to do like a search. And maybe your autocomplete search is in an API somewhere, so you're doing a call. Um, so let's get the payload from that action. So we don't really need the type. Um, but let's debounce it, because we don't want every single letter. We want to wait until they're done typing, and then look it up. So you just say, debounce time 200. And then if they delete one letter, but add the same letter back in, you don't want to send the request again to your server. So distinct until changed. And then after that, you can concat map. Uh, it just means that the order of your events uh, is correct. So some of the different mappings will parallelize your requests, and they will not necessarily come back in the same order. And then you can do the search and emit an action. And I actually didn't. That's not real code at the bottom. But the point is, if you had to do any of this stuff normally, it might become very imperative, and you might be really worried about how it's doing it. But here, you can just tell it what to do. Um, and once you get sort of used to this sort of mindset, it can become really powerful and really easy to read, to explain, um, to follow. So let's talk about some ways you can avoid epic fails, which was the title of my talk, because I thought it's really cool. You can make so many epic puns. Um, the first is walk, don't run. This isn't one of those just open your laptop and type some stuff thing. You really should take your time, because it's not a super trivial concept if you're not used to it. If you're used to it, great. Just throw it in your Redux project and get using it. But if you are new to ArcGIS or new to reactive programming, I would say just take it slow. Um, there's no rush. Um, do your homework. Learn RxJS or just at least read the docs. Because when I started, I started my job. We had a bunch of observables in our code. And I was like, this seems fine. And I just tried to start using them. And I would break them all the time. Because I never really took the time to understand what was happening and why. Um, also. It may stick around. There is a proposal to add it to JavaScript as a native thing. Um, it's probably, if it ever happens, not going to be for years. But hey, it might help you in the future if you learn it now. Um, here's something I wanted to show you about the importance of doing your homework. Um, there the RxJS is used a lot in the Angular community, actually. So they have a little, if you ever are stuck with material, add the word Angular to the end, and you'll usually find a blog post. I know, I know. But it's fine. They don't have to know we're looking at their stuff. So there was this, there was this blog post that somebody shared on my office Slack. Um, and it was, what are the different types of maps of RxJS? And why they often create bugs that we don't notice. So these are four different types of maps you can do to your data. Um, and I had not looked into this until like embarrassingly recently. Um, so the first one, switch map. Every time a new action of the same type occurs, if the first one is pending, it'll be aborted. So if you make a request, but then maybe you click it again and there's a different state, it'll abort the first one because it's no longer relevant. Um, so for example, if you, let's say you have a shopping cart. Right, and you have a call to the server that's like, get the total of your shopping cart. If you add something to your shopping cart, you send a request to get the total so you can dynamically update your UI. But then if you add a second thing, 
that total is not really going to be important anymore. So you cancel that one, and you pay attention to the second one. That's what switch map is for. Then there's opposite switch map, which is exhaust map, where new actions get canceled or get ignored until the first one is pending. So if you ever have like a, like a button clicker, you know, um, and you want to sort of wait for the first thing to finish before you do more button clicking. So if your user is like refreshing some view, um, you don't want to have to be constantly refreshing it. It might never refresh if they're still clicking the button. So you would use something like exhaust map. So a lot of these maps have uh, functionality built in that isn't very explicit, which is why it's important to do your homework. And then concat map, they keep the order. And then merge map or flat map, which is the same thing, uh, parallelizes your request, but the order is not guaranteed. So it really varies on your use case. And this was something that I, oh, I had this bug, man. And it was because of this. So do your homework, is what I'm saying. Um, I'll link to, there's a link here. I'll link it um, in the slides at the end. You will trip along the way. It is kind of a complex ecosystem. And because a lot of us are coming from a very sort of like step-by-step -step mentality, a lot of the times it won't make sense. Um, and that's OK. And you should keep going, and you should not give up. Um, here are some assorted tips. There's a, an operator called do which is the sort of side effect operator, which is a great place to put a console log. Because sometimes if you just put a debugger, because of the way observable is wired, you won't get exactly the response you're expecting. Um, reading the docs tip, uh, the epics run after the reducer, which is something that I also learned way too late in the game. Um, and it's right there in the docs, just constantly. Every other paragraph, they're like, remember, they run after the reducer. Um, and if you go on them, you'll see. So when in doubt, read the docs to your homework. Um, and because of its approach and its complexity, uh, it's not for everyone. But it is pretty cool. Um, and if you do get the urge to check it out, to try it out maybe in a project, in a, like a side project maybe, or maybe introduce it to work if it sounds like something that would be helpful, you should do it and be curious. And it's hard. But you will definitely feel like a cool wizard by the time you're done, because you just sort of tell it to do things, and it does. Um, and it's amazing. And it's not, I'm not saying it's the solution to all your problems, but streams are actually pretty cool, uh, cats over time. Um, and I think it would be beneficial to at least check it out. Um, like I said, I'm a casual user. I'm not like a diehard fan. There are diehard, diehard fans on the internet, so be careful. Um, and that's it for me. Thank you. Uh, awesome. I'm going to put this up online just with all the cool links so you guys can play with it. And there's a lot of cool visual stuff in there, too. Thank you so much, Ellie.